This morning, for the first time in years, there occurred to me the possibility of a search. I remembered the first time the search occurred to me. I came to myself under a chindalea bush. Six inches from my nose, a dung beetle was scratching around under the leaves. As I watched, there awoke in me an immense curiosity. I was on to something. I vowed that if I ever got out of this fix, I would pursue the search. Naturally, as soon as I recovered and got home, I forgot all about it. What is the nature of the search, you ask? Really, it is very simple, at least for a fellow like me. So simple that it is easily overlooked. The search is what anyone would undertake if he were not sunk in the everydayness of his own life. Everydayness is the enemy. No search is possible. Perhaps there was a time when everydayness was not too strong and one could break its grip by brute strength. Now nothing breaks it, but disaster. Only once in my life was the grip of everydayness broken, when I lay bleeding in a ditch. To become aware of the possibility of the search is to be on to something. Not to be on to something is to be in despair. What do you seek, God? You ask with a smile. I hesitate to answer, since all other Americans have settled the matter for themselves. Who wants to be dead last among 180 million Americans? For as everyone knows, the polls report that 98% of Americans believe in God, and the remaining 2% are atheists and agnostics, which leaves not a single percentage point for a seeker. Truthfully, it is the fear of exposing my own ignorance which constrains me from mentioning the object of my search. For, to begin with, I cannot even answer this, the simplest and most basic of all questions. Am I, in my search, a hundred miles ahead of my fellow Americans, or a hundred miles behind them? That is to say, have 98% of Americans already found what I seek, or are they so sunk in everydayness that not even the possibility of a search has occurred to them? On my honor, I do not know the answer.